So Waves just released a new plugin of an older plugin, but they're selling it as a new plugin. This new plugin is called EV2, and it's just a better model of the SSL 4000E console. And by better model, that typically means that it's more CPU intensive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it probably will sound closer to the real thing. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through all the features and some of the new additions that Waves has added to the EV2. And we're going to compare it to the two older Waves plugins, which is the SSL E channel and SSL G channel. And I'll also demonstrate this EV2 plugin on a few different sources so you can get a good sense if this is worth it for you. And because I'm a scientist and a total nerd about this stuff, we're going to look underneath the hood of all three of these plugins so you can see exactly what the differences are. And if you're curious, there are some big differences, so be sure to stick with me all the way to the end. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without needing to spend a bunch of money on expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week and it's all gonna help you level up the quality of your music, so you do not wanna miss that. And because we're talking about different plugins today, I figured you'd probably be interested in my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins downloadable guide. This is a comprehensive guide that has tons of free plugins that I use every single day. I mean, things like compressors, clippers, limiters, EQs, there's cool saturators, there's awesome delays. I even have drum samples and stuff like that, amp sims. So this guy will have everything that you could possibly ever need and it's totally free. So check that out if that sounds interesting to you. There's a link to download that free PDF in the description. Okay, so let's take a look at these three different Waves SSL plugins. We'll start with the E channel and the G channel just so you get an idea of what was there originally so that when we look at the EV2, the newest plugin that they just released, you'll have an idea of what the differences are and if it's worth the upgrade. So on the left, you have the E channel, which you can see right here, and then also the G channel. So the E-Series compressor was actually released by SSL in the 80s. And what made this so special was that this was the first console to ever have a compressor in every single channel. So I'm blaming this for the loudness war. <laughs> then, several years later, they came out with the G channel, which was the predecessor of the E channel. So the idea behind the G channel is that everything is a little bit more precise, the EQs actually become more narrow as you boost them. So that'll keep the overall energy about the same, even though you're boosting or cutting a lot more of very specific frequencies. On the E series, so the original, the filter bandwidth stays the same. So it's really good for genres that have a lot more space to them, like pop, hip hop, R&B, that kind of stuff. G series tends to have a little bit more mid-range to it, a little bit more chunk to it, if that makes sense. So it's great for like a more raw rock sound. So these plugins basically have very similar layouts. They have a filter section in this top left corner on both plugins. They have the EQ section below that. And they both then have a dynamic section with, with the compressor and then also an expander or a gate if you push this button. And then it has uh, some other various uh, features like analog, which I think just adds noise. And then this input gain, there's a polarity inversion button here. And then here's your output fader volume. So where are these plugins different? So let's talk about that. First of all, these filters are exactly the same in both of the plugins. And how do we know that? We know that because we can use a tool called Plugin Doctor to read out what is happening under the hood of these plugins, okay? So if we set these back to full reset, okay, and we adjust the filter, let's put this to 80 hertz, put them both to 80. Okay, here's the cutoff filter that we see for the E channel. Let's do the same for the G channel. It's exactly on top of each other, okay? We can do the same thing with this high pass filter. So let's put these both at like 5K and you can see they're exactly on top of each other. So we know these are pretty much identical. Okay, the filtering is the same. Now let's look at the different shelving 
shapes because they're very, very different. Okay. If we look at the E channel, we boost this up. Okay. We add 5 dB here. We have this very gentle curve, and then we have this roll off right around uh, 14K. Let's take a look at the G channel. What does that look like? We put it up to 5 dB. We get this almost like a Poltec style EQ shelf. Okay, so let's let's hide the E channel for a second. So you can see there's this dip now before the shelf. So that's really interesting. Something else that's interesting is that these are both set to 5 dB. And what we see is the E channel goes way higher. On the E channel, we also have an option to change both the shelves to bell shapes. Um, same with this low frequency band. So if we don't necessarily want a shelf, you can push this bell, and now you have access to um, a bell shape, which is really handy if you want to maybe just enhance uh, just the kick drum without affecting like the bass guitar or something. On the G channel, we don't have that option. These are permanently stuck as shelves, okay? So if you boost this up, there's no way to turn these into bells. So what they've done on the G channel to give you access to these low frequencies or these really high frequencies is they added this HMF times three and this LMF divided by three button. And what, and what these do, and it's kind of counterintuitive because it's in the HF channel, but if you click this, it actually will multiply the frequencies in the HMF, the high middle frequency band, by three, okay? So what does that look like? Let's put these back to zero. So if we boost up, let's let's say we'll do, yeah, we'll do 1K. Okay, so let's boost this by 5 dB. If you choose this HMF times 3, it's going to multiply this 1K by 3, so it should shift this to 3K, which it does for the most part, okay? But this allows us to access frequencies higher than what we were limited to, limited to right here. So 7K is the max. Now we can go all the way up to 21K in theory. So same thing, it's just kind of the opposite, occurs down here. Um, if you engage this button, now any frequency in this band is divided by 3, so we can go lower than the limitation of this band, which is 200 hertz. Okay. So if we go to 200 hertz here, and we boost this up, and let's get rid of this. Now we can divide this frequency by 3 by pushing this button, so now we can go even lower. Okay, So we can go all the way down to about 50 hertz, which is really nice. Let's take a look at how the filter shapes change between the E channel and the G channel plugin. So let's boost these all by 6 dB, and then let's make the Q as tight as it possibly can go so you can see the differences in the E channel versus the G channel. And the E channel has a much more narrow, sharp Q, and the G channel is more broad. Okay, we can't get it any sharper than this. What's also interesting is these are both set at exactly the same frequency, and look at how much they're off. This is at 4,500, and that's the E channel, and this one's at about 3K, and this is the G. And right now we have them both set to 3.5K, so these are all way off from what the knob values actually are. Now, both the dynamic sections on these plugins are identical, same with the expansion portions, and, I'm, and the analog, I think, is also very similar for these plugins. So everything else is the same. The differences between the original E channel and the G channel SSL plugins by Waves all lie in basically the EQ section of everything. And then the different features like the HMF times 3 versus changing the shelves to bells. Now, both of these plugins also have a bunch of different options here, like this EQ2 bypass to dynamic sidechain. Uh, dynamics to bypass or dynamics to channel out. So you can see they're identical on both sides, except this one has filter dynamic sidechain. And all these do is just rearrange the order that the audio goes through. And if you look at the manual, it can be really complicated just looking at it, but the manual does a really nice job of laying it out. So at, in the default state for both these plugins, all the audio is going to go first to the dynamics processing, so your compressor, your expander, then it's going to go to the filters, so then you can filter out any low frequencies or high frequencies, and then the EQ. If you select the channel out, or split in channel out, 
what you're going to do is put the filters before the dynamics, and you're also going to pull the EQ before the dynamics processor. Okay. If you choose the split button on either of these, all that does is pull the filter before everything. Okay, normally the filter is after dynamics. You click that split button, which is right here. It's going to pull the filter first. And then there's some additional things that you can do, like if you can do the split plus the dynamic side chain on the E channel. And basically all this is doing is now you're pulling the filter first because you push the split button. And then the dynamics processing is going to be modified by whatever you do with the EQ. So the EQ now acts as the side chain for the compressor. So if there's too much sub kick in there, you don't want it to react to the subwoofer, but you don't want to filter it out, you can put that side chain in, lower the sub frequencies, so then the compressor doesn't necessarily see them. But because it's the side chain, the EQ is not going to affect the overall sub frequencies overall. So your audio will still have it. Your compressor just won't see it, so it won't react to it. So that's helpful if you want to keep a really powerful, punchy kick drum. So then here's the other one, and this one's just for the G channel. It's basically the same thing. And again, this is in the user manual for these plugins. Okay, so now you have an idea of what Waves had out in 2006 when the E channel and G channel first came out. So let's see how they've improved on that with the new EV2 plugin. Okay, so this is the EV2 channel strip. And again, the EV2 is just a model of the SSL 4000 E console. So it's just basically a rehash of this plugin, the E channel. But if you notice, there's a few more features on here that are pretty cool. Okay. So now in the upper left, we have a line in and a mic input. So this is modeling the preamp section of the E console, which is really cool because it has a lot of cool analog flavor. They've also moved the polarity inversion up here, and then they have a 20 dB pad to it. Okay. Something that you should be aware of is this analog button adds some noise, but additionally, it adds all the total harmonic distortion that is both in the input channel here and the output. So if you uncheck this analog button, you basically bypass all of the cool harmonic distortion and saturation that they have in this input preamp stage, okay? So you probably wanna leave this on. The noise floor is really low and I'll show you that in a second. So it really won't be introducing too much noise, but it just has a cool flavor to it. The compression section is actually right below, and so it's located here instead of this upper right corner. And then you have the expansion part, which is right here. So basically they moved this to right here. Our filters are now located in the bottom left, okay? We still have the option to split them, which would allow us to then pull the filters before everything, before the dynamics processing and the EQ. And then here's our EQ section. So the, all this is the same, right? So we have the bell, we can adjust the bell from the shelf, and we have all these things. But if you notice, we have two more things. We have EQ type up here, and there's a brown and a black button. And then they have this little speaker icon. And I think this speaker icon is amazing. And we'll talk about that in a second. So in terms of the overall shape, let's see how they are different, okay? So let's boost the original E-channel by 6 dB here. We can see that shelf. Let's do it over here with uh, the EV2. And you can see they're slightly different. Um, the frequencies actually go up all the way to 20K now before they start rolling off. So unlike the older version, now we're getting access to these very, very high frequencies above like 14K. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But it's uh, interesting to see that they're different. And notice that it's also a little bit lower in gain. Okay, so let's take a look at the overall shape of the HMF channel. So let's do like 6 dB here. This is the original E channel from 2006. And here is the remodel, the EV2. So the frequency location is a little bit different. And the peak height. So again, the gain is a little bit different. Clearly, they modeled a different... SSL console for this. What about the f let's look at the filters really quickly. Let's do 80 hertz for the original E channel, and let's do the same for the EV2. And you can see they're actually pretty different. I mean, it's so different that I thought I maybe entered something in wrong. I mean, I have to go all the way up to 100, almost 120 hertz for them to match now. 
So the filters are way different. Again, you're gonna have to use your ears to really dial in this plugin. So let's talk about the features that aren't in the original SSL E channel that are in the EV2. First one is up here in the top left. I didn't even tell you about this, but there's a side chain feature now. So we can trigger the compressor based off of some other input signal than whatever channel this is on, which is really, really awesome. And I've been waiting for ways to do this. And I feel like every plugin company should have some sort of side chain functionality built in because you can do a lot of really cool creative effects with it. So I'm glad to see that they finally implemented a side chain feature. Now, what's really cool about this, and I'll show you in the live demo on the second half of this video, but this allows us to solo the frequency that we are sweeping. So you can see when this is engaged and I adjust this filter, it basically lets us focus in on whatever frequency this is adjusting. So you can really quickly fine tune exactly where you want to position your EQs and then either boost or cut them. It's super helpful. It's an amazing workflow improvement from the original and uh, this alone, in my opinion, if you like using SSL channel strips, is worth the price of this plugin. The EQ types here allow us to change from uh, the black knobs and the brown knobs. In different years, they had different knobs and different circuitry. So let's see what they actually do to the audio. So if we leave it on the black knob and we increase this to 6 dB, and we leave it as a shelf, that's what... That's the overall frequency shape. If we change it to the brown, you can see that it's a little bit less and a little bit smoother, okay? Let's change it to a bell. And we switch between the black and the brown. You can see the brown has a much wider cue to it, okay? So this is gonna have, this will be better for like tonal shaping and the black knobs are gonna be a little bit more precise, a little bit cleaner for doing cuts or very specific um, enhancements of certain frequencies, okay? Something else, if you notice, the location of these bands is shifted. So the black, let's see, this is 200 hertz. So this, the black knob is like right on the money for what frequency it is. The brown knob, even though it's at 200 hertz, is really kind of sitting at like 180. So it's a little bit shifted lower. Now something I almost forgot about is that if you load up the mono channel of the EV2, you don't have this feature, which down here, it's totally missing. But on the stereo version of the plugin, it's here. And this is actually something that's pretty cool as well. This is a knob that allows us to adjust the stereo width of the track it's on. So if we leave it as it is in default, it's standard stereo. As you turn this up, it actually will make the source mono, okay? And once you're straight up at 12 o'clock, now the audio will be totally mono. What's cool about this is this allows you to really dial in the image that you're trying to get with like drums, for example. It, maybe your drums are too wide and you wanna bring them in so that then you can put the guitars farther. It's a nice tool to have in certain circumstances. What's also cool is if you keep going past 12 o'clock, you actually will reverse the left and right channels. So again, if you're mixing drums, and let's say you have this on a drum bus, but the drums are recorded in drummer perspective, and you want it to be an audience perspective, you can just turn this knob and reverse the stereo field, and now instead of the toms going from left to right, they'll go from right to left. You know? Or you can move your hi-hat that's on the right side in your overheads to your left side, and invert the stereo image. Also, they have these two additional features. They have extra wide and they have filter. And the extra wide basically, I'm guessing it removes the middle channel or something, but it makes it super wide. And I'll show you in the actual demonstration what that sounds like. And then the filter, from what I understand, will filter out maybe everything under 100 or 200, I think 200 hertz, so that you have some of your middle channel back. If you do something like this on drums or you know something that has low frequencies that you want to keep, maybe in a vocal or something, you can just put that filter on and that will bring all those frequencies back below about 200 hertz. So let's hop into a session and I'll showcase some of the sounds of the EV2 so you can hear how cool this saturation circuit is that they added. And I'll let you hear what all these different features sound like 
on an actual song. Okay, so the track that I'm going to showcase this plugin on is by a band called Deer Spring. They live in Washington, D.C., and I have links to their social and also their Spotify stuff. So if you like what you hear, go and check them out, support them, buy some merch, or see them if they tour through your city. Let me just give you a little sample of the song. So let's see what the SSL EV2 can do for our drum bus. So I'm just gonna bypass uh, the compressor I have on there. All right, so here is the EV2 loaded up. Let me uh, bypass this and we're just gonna play the drums. So big open drum sound. These are not programmed, these are actually studio drums. So let's check out what the uh, the saturation circuit can do, because this is a unique feature that's only on the EV2. It really does sound like an analog saturator to me. Like if I go and I put ran this drum bus through an analog compressor and just crushed it like that, I mean, it has a similar vibe. It really has a cool feel to it. I think this would be amazing on like a room bus or something where you're just trying to really get a lot out of the drums. It doesn't necessarily sound good on this because this is my main drum bus, right? We want to maintain some of the clarity of the drums, but you know, on a room or something, it would sound really cool. So let's try it on a room and see what it does there. Okay, so I'm gonna solo just the room. See, and you can hear, man, it just has this really cool saturation to it. It just makes this room sound massive. It sounds like the drummer's hitting it so hard. Just add a little compression to it. I'm going to put the 20 dB pad on because I'm boosting it 45 decibels again to really get a lot of the saturation out. Let's clean it up with the filters. So original. I mean, it sounds huge, right? Here's the stereo image. Watch how much it, you, we have control over how big we want these drums to sound. And then you can invert the stereo image like I mentioned earlier. Okay, and because this is a room bus, I like to keep them really wide. Let's see what this extra wide button does. So, it, it, I mean, it feels almost synthetic. I don't really like it on this particular case. But uh, let's leave this set up like this and see what it sounds like in context. So I'm going to bypass the EV2, and then uh, we'll see if we like the sound that it adds. So maybe a little bit too much saturation, right? We hear that snare drum breaking up. But man, it just feels so much wider when we have this in. Um, I really like this. So let me show you this uh, amazing feature that they added with this little uh, speaker icon. This will help us dial in the EQ for these rooms. So when you have this engaged, now anytime you adjust the frequency, it's going to focus in on just that spot. So like right here, it's kind of ringing and annoy, annoying, then you can just dial that back. Okay. Sounds a lot smoother now. Um, we can do the same thing with these, uh, the bass frequencies. Let's try to clean up some of the low frequencies there.
Like there's a big ringy thing going on here. So we can cut there. Okay, so let's hear what it sounds like with and without this on our drum room bus. So this without. It just sounds so much bigger. Let's listen in context. Listen to how much the snare has body now when this is in. It just really comes alive. It just makes the drummer sound like he's hitting the drum so much harder. All right, let's try the EV2 on a bass guitar. Oh, that's pretty cool. I kind of dig that. <laughs> For like a really gritty textured bass sound, oh, this could be really cool. So let's uh, let's squeeze the bass a little bit with the compressor. I'm digging how it sounds already with just this saturation here. Let's uh, dial in some of the EQ settings, and I'm gonna sh we're gonna use this cool feature again to really hone in on the annoying frequencies and to help us cut any of the muddy stuff that we don't need. We don't really need that. Yeah, th we don't want that. So. That's going to clean up a little bit of the space for the vocals to have a little bit more air in it. Okay, let's try. Um, let's see what it sounds like down here. So 2K on bass usually drives me a little nuts, so let's try to clean some of that up. It's this really honky sound I just hate. We gotta be careful because if we, if we take too much of this out, we're gonna lose all the attack on the bass, and we still wanna have some of that. Cool. Let's experiment with this EQ type, right? So we saw that the brown is a much wider EQ shape, and it's a little bit lower frequency. And then the black is a much more narrow, more precise kind of filter. So let's see what we can do and what that does to the tone of the bass. So let's find a good frequency to boost. You know, let's give it, let's thicken it up around like 80 or 90 hertz right there, okay? Now I would never do this in the context of the song because I think it already sounds pretty good, but we're gonna go a little bit overboard with the amount of boost we have here just so we can hear the differences between the black and the brown knobs. So you hear the brown is a little bit looser, right? It's not as focused as the black knob. I'm digging it, man. This saturation circuit on bass is nuts. All right, let's try it on guitars. So I'm gonna throw it on the rhythm bus. Let's start with that saturation, see if it's really cool like it was for the bass. Not really digging it. Mm -mm. 
I will say though, it does give some texture to the guitars, but um, I don't think it's right for this song. So probably keep this off or maybe just on there a touch. Okay, something I'm hearing is there's this low mid frequency thing I'm not liking. So let's activate this speaker and let's let's do some hunting to see if we can get rid of this this like mud I'm hearing. So use the bell. So I don't think I will use this because. I can't get it narrow enough, so let's go up to the uh, this low middle frequency band. So let's make it nice and tight cue so we can be surgical and we'll listen with our, our uh, speaker icon here. Right there, right at about 500 hertz. Let's get rid of some of that, so we'll deactivate that. Oh my gosh, it's so much better, right? The whole mix just opened up. Because we got rid of those frequencies, I think we need to also come in and cut some of the harshness out of the guitar. So let's turn this on again and let's find those bad frequencies. Let's get more narrow. I would say like right around here, let's cut some of this out and see what it does to the tone. Way too much. There we go. That kind of just smooths it out, right? Okay, and then we can just do some quick filtering just to tighten everything up. And let's put this in front of everything by engaging the split. Cool. I normally don't go this high on the high pass filtering, but you know what? It sounds good for this song, so let's just roll with it. And then let's also roll off some of that high hissy top end. That's going to give, again, the vocals a little bit more space. So let's check this out. Let's see how it sounds with everything. So they feel a little bit wider, but I still think they're a little dark. So I think we could bring back a little bit of this high frequency stuff. Yeah, it sounds better. Now it's a little bit more pleasant. There you have it. That's a quick demonstration of the EV2 on a bunch of different sources. So you can kind of get a sense for the workflow and how you can use it for your music. So do you think the EV2 is worth the upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I think the combination of the improved workflow using that audition button and the saturation circuit and the sidechain make this a pretty much a no-brainer. I think it's a welcome addition to the old 2006 SSL plugins that Waves released previously. I want to give you a reminder to go and download your free copy of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. The link to that is in the description. I know you're going to find that one super valuable. I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. I hope this review was really insightful and gives you some perspective as to what the EV2 can offer above and beyond the original SSL plugins by Waves. And I hope to see you in another video.